this self-heating lunchbox, this LED house plant, and this cutting board are all products shown here at CES 2023. Oh, this is cool. But quirky, innovative products like these have faced big challenges over the past three years. You see, it's pretty normal for hardware startups who come here to have a tougher time getting their ideas in the hands of consumers. Compared to upstarts focused on software, but this year, the economy and lack of VC funding is tossing in more hurdles. Here's why that matters and what it may mean for the years to come. Flora Mini is a lot more than just a plant that lights up. It's a real mood setter. It's reactive, it responds to music, can respond to your voice, and it's really pretty to look at. So, you know, making something that could assemble easily, could fit in someone's house, all of that was a challenge, especially the COVID lockdowns was a big challenge. The company originally planned to launch in 2022, but things have been delayed until later this year. Consumers' price expectations are, you know, if somebody buys a TV, there's 10 million of those TVs made a year. We'll maybe make 10,000 of these this year. Dealing with that delta in economies of scale is really difficult. Other companies are dealing with this too. For example, Steambox, an innovative lunchbox that heats food using steam. Yeah, you're just pouring the water into the bottom, pop the lid back on, and within 15 minutes, I should hopefully have a freshly steamed meal. After a manufacturing partner in China was forced to pull out due to strict COVID-19 government restrictions, Steambox had to source new materials for its product. Some setbacks through COVID, uh, it had a big impact on our business. We lost our manufacturing partner at some point because they had to pull back in, in Asia. Venture capital funding is also drawing up, dropping more than 50% year over year between June and October of last year. CES used to be the place for gadget makers to show their most innovative tech, hoping for funding or press attention. But it feels a little different this year. Pre-pandemic, it wasn't unheard of for CES to attract 200,000 visitors. It was a behemoth and the jewel in the crown of tech conferences for innovators. But in 2021, much like everything else, it went virtual and returned last year with just 44,000 people. And it's interesting after the, you know, the COVID break and also the current economic situation to see where companies think they can make money or convince consumers to spend their money. All of a sudden the pandemic hits and shuts down the world. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? But it actually was a great thing because it kind of slowed us down, but also brought awareness to the struggle in communication. Other companies are delaying their products and opting out of attending CES. Plinkpad, for example, considered showing new versions of its balance board at CES, but decided to shift its plans to 2024. Walking the floor at CES this year, two things stand out. One, there are fewer startups, and two, there are fewer eye-catching gadgets. Like this Novetto in one speaker from CES 2021. It could wirelessly shoot a beam of sound directly to your ears. Also, there was this air-conditioned baseball cap from 2020. I think after COVID, health, fitness, general well-being has become more important. Block, for example, is a smart cutting board that can display healthy recipes. We're big digital fitness people, and we realized during the pandemic that we didn't have an opportunity to like have folks in our kitchen anymore, and we missed kind of that communal atmosphere. I also saw this smartwatch alternative that's powered by solar panels. Our aim at the Earth, our goal, is to make you do the activities that you never do, but you should for your health. It can have a classic watch face, but also be charged by your movements. While moving away from a lot of the wild and wacky stuff might make sense right now, I do look forward to things getting back to the way they used to be someday.